Big Questions with the Dead Milkman. Okay, hey everybody. Uh, as you can see, we have some special guests this week. Um, we'd like to welcome Andrew Irvin, uh, who's a uh, an author and uh, creator of the uh, the new Dead Milkman RPG game called um, Lost Tomb of the Bitchin Chimera. And we'd also like to welcome uh, Justin Sir Royce, who is the uh, person who runs and is publishing the book. He runs a company called Severed uh, Severed Books. So we'd like to welcome them to the show, and we we. Uh, we want to ask them a couple of questions and grill them why they got involved with this silly endeavor. <laughs> I don't consider it silly. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I guess uh, I'll start off with the first question and, and I'll direct this to you, Andrew. How did all this crazy thing get started? Um, well, first, thanks for having us here. This is, this is super exciting. Thank you, you guys for inviting us into your, your virtual home. Uh, you know, the, the, the gig you guys did last year, 2019 at Laurel Hill, um, I had the, the terrible, terrible idea of writing a, a short adventure module just for a couple buddies. Um, and Dean, you probably remember you got me permission to, to get in, sneak into the cemetery early, you know, while you guys were loading in. Uh, Rod, you might not have heard the story of your wife accosting us in the parking lot, trying not to let us go in. <laughs> um, we yeah, had a, uh, you know, we, we just set up in the lawn, um, played a, a ridiculous little game. And uh, it turns out that this this genius over here, Justin, thought that uh, more people might be interested than just the three of us. Uh, I'm still skeptical, but. Uh, oh, uh, based on the, the success of the Kickstarter, I'm not skeptical anymore. <laughs> no, no, uh, it, uh, all kidding aside. Um, we, we found this, this perfect Venn diagram of Dead Milkman fans and d and players, and, and the, the sweet spot in the middle uh, have to be probably the, the coolest people on earth. So it's been a, a joy to, to, to find them. So you took the, the, the little short little adventure that you wrote just for the show, and you kind of expanded it out into a kind of a full-length character-based adventure? That, that's right. Uh, I, it started as uh, Into the Burrow of the owl bear. the Owlbear being uh, one of the famous monsters in D&D, and why the hell do you think they called it an owlbear anyway? <laughs> um, so we, we started with that, and of course it, it was getting dark, so we had glow-in-the-dark dice for after the sun went down, and uh, those have remained part of the game. Uh, Justin uh, has some on board uh, at Severed Books. Uh, and it just sort of, uh, once Justin had his, his uh, brilliant insights and uh, sort of turned this into what it is, it, it blew up into a, a bigger game, a bigger adventure, um, and uh, I can't wait to, for everyone to see it. This, this is an owlbear. Owl okay. What's that? Oh, okay, there it is. Yeah, there's an owlbear for you. Yeah. Nice. I would have never thought of burrow owlbear. <laughs> and I'm in this band. <laughs> um, there are gonna... so many terrible dead milkman jokes in this thing that just like, it's mm -hmm. embarrassing the, the number of, of awful, awful references. <laughs> So Justin, I'm gonna to come to you. Like, how did you get involved in like, um, how did you know Andrew and have you worked together before or anything? We hadn't worked together, but um, I um, go up to Philly a lot and there's the annual game convention called Pax Unplugged. And we saw each other there, um, I think two years in a row, very briefly. And the last time I saw him, he pitched me a, 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 an idea. And it wasn't this idea, this sort of morphed into that and I couldn't say no. Uh, the second he <laughs> described what it was, I immediately said, yes, yes, absolutely. Um, and it's, it's changed and it's grown a little bit since then, but uh, I had full faith that Andrew would bring the passion to the project that it needed. And it's been totally, I don't wanna to say totally easy. It's, it's definitely, it hasn't been easy, but, uh, <laughs> It's been exciting. Every day has been exciting. Absolutely. You know, through uh, um, hard days and, and easy days. But uh, it, it's, I, I think in the end, it's going to be a very special experience for a lot of people. Cool. And um, just to kind of maybe backtrack a little bit, how long is, like, how did Severed Books start? How long have you been doing Severed Books? 
Uh, I started several books in 2012. Um, I wrote a really long series that was optioned for TV for a while um, called So Say the Waiters. And um, I just, I really just needed a, like a label to stick that under because I self-published it and I just wanted to hammer it out because I got, it got optioned basically before I could self-publish it. Um, and then a few, a few years later, I got into tabletop gaming and I sort of rolled all of my skills like graphic design and, and illustration into wow. what is now Severed Books, which is a sort of a mean beast of merch, merch making and game making and book creation. Um, so, yeah. So, I mean, you're doing artwork and stuff for the game too, right? Yeah. So um, all the illustrations, except for the amazing maps are mine. Um, and I, I do want to give a shout out to Nicholas um, who provided amazing maps for this game. I think we'll probably show them in a little bit. Um, hey, spoiler alert. I'm just a one man show in my basement. This is this is my basement and I just do all the graphic design and illustration and stuff. Um, and it's, it's a pretty like, it's a pretty punk rock endeavor. You know, like I, I, I feel really honored to collaborate with you guys. And I feel like Andrew um, chose a, a great venue, i.e. me, because it's, I mean, it's just me pumping out this stuff, so. I'd like to show off the, the quality of work that Justin does. This is his most <laughs> recent product. Uh, it's a, a comic book called Headlopper that I absolutely love. So this is a, a smaller box set than what we're doing with you guys. But he does the, the beautiful art, he, uh, he, not the art, but he does the beautiful production dice bags, dice. We're gonna get all the sort of stuff for the dead milkman um, and it's gonna look awesome. Um, so he, he's doing tremendous work where uh, I couldn't be more excited about this. The scale is gonna be more this size. If you remember these old box sets. Rodney probably Apps does. some stuff in them. I do, Andrew, I do, I do have, I have the prototypes here if I can. <gasps> oh, uh, so here, Nice. Oh. And they're really pretty, honestly. They're, <laughs> and they're, <big. laughs> and they're, 20, they're 25 millimeters, so uh, an inch on each side. So you, you don't have Trump hands. Those are bigger. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they look huge in Trump's hands. <laughs> Those are awesome. And, uh, and then the box set. Uh, wow. Wow, that's pretty, impressive. It's pretty neat. I'm a backer for this thing. Um, Me too. <laughs> I'm getting one of those. Yeah, the art is fantastic. Thank it, you. Um, did you see? There's a uh, um, there's a documentary called Eye of the Beholder, uh -huh. um, and I don't know if you've seen that yet. Where they talk about the importance of the art in Dungeons and Dragons. And actually, mm. we were we were lucky enough. Um, Lawrence uh, Schick, you didn't see this because obviously you weren't you you know you and Drew weren't on the episode. But when we first learned about this, I I put this up there. I've been carrying this around with me since I was like 17 years old. Um, that, and for, for, for Lawrence to give the thing and basically saying that he loved it was fantastic, but the art is so important. There's in the, in the documentary, they start talking about how the art makes you want to play the game. It explains everything. And it was great because your art was inspired by, but it wasn't derivative. So I was just like super happy with that. You, um, when you do this stuff, folks, the, the, the art is really key to it it's a game of imagination but uh, um but just really really nailed the sort of classic style of it without you know aping it he, he, he got it perfectly so i would see this stuff come in and i'd have to kind of avert my eyes because i want i want my full thing like i want it to be like christmas so i was trying not to look thank you that means a lot to me it really does well, andrew and justin what got you into dungeons and dragons in the first place you want to go for it Ace. Um, well, I, I started as a, a kid, you know, where uh, I guess my, I grew up in, in Delco, not uh, probably a mile or two from where Dean lives now. Um, and, uh, you know, most of my fun as a kid was reading books and walking uh, in the, the forest, Smedley Park. Um, uh, and I guess I was in elementary school or something where my, my mom bought me that original box set of, of basic D and D uh, maybe for for Christmas or something. And uh, I, I had a, a like I couldn't really find people to play with like it, like Rodney was saying a little bit earlier like hey here's this game now here's 300 pages of rules to learn and then we'll go do it. Um, it it's 
maybe a little hard to get started, but um, but it was like the the art, like like Justin's work, the art really pulled me in. Um, once I did find people to to start playing with, um, it becomes this collaborative storytelling thing. And uh, outside of role playing games, I'm a novelist. I, I write books and things. And um, as a storyteller, it, it's it's super enjoyable to get to create stories with other people. Um, where everyone's bringing their own characters in and their own ideas and their own worlds. And um, that, that to me is, is a, a really fun, fun part of the game. I guess that's, that's how I started. Mm. I, I just want to sort of piggyback on what you said. Um, there's, the, there's very few mediums where you create something and it's this interactive. And I love that the Dead Milkmen are collaborating with us, of course, and then we're putting out this like living document that I'm, I'm going to assume thousands of people are playing because we have over a thousand backers. Those are mostly game masters who are going to introduce it to five, you know, probably five people apiece. So let's just say 5,000 players. Um, those 5,000 people are going to be interacting with this medium all differently. I mean, it's all, every single session is going to be not drastically different, but they're all going to branch off and do their own things. And now the Dead Milkman world, I mean, it is a little micro world that Andrew's created like a sandbox. It's such an unusual, strange experience for that to happen, especially in modern day. I mean, there's, there's video game versions of it, but um, I, it's just really exciting to imagine what, weirdness is going to happen in people's living rooms once <laughs> COVID is over. F you COVID. Um, once all that's over, it's just really kind of magical to, to imagine how that's going to play out. And I actually, I hope people kind of live stream it. And I hope that maybe we can have an evening where we all um, maybe sit down on this, on the same evening and play it all together. Well, not together, but at the same time, knowing that you know, people in other living rooms across the nation or across the world would be playing the game sometime in the spring or something. Um, and, and maybe people will write their own uh, modules building off of it. Maybe, you know, like everyone's going to go off and do the same thing that we did at the in the cemetery. Yeah. I can um, remember uh, being a, in my early teens and sitting there with graph paper and drawing, <laughs> meticulously drawing out the dungeons. And I remember my parents said to me, both of them, they said, look at you. You never leave the house. You never go outside. How is that going to prepare you for life in the 21st century? <laughs> so yeah, ha-ha, <laughs> mom and dad. <laughs> <laughs> no, is, is the origin story uh, of your RPG, uh, Joe, very well known? Is this sort of part of the Dead Milkman well, world? I told it in a, in a, in a, I've, I've told it in interviews since the early 2000s. Okay. <laughs> oh, the, uh, the the music one, right? Yeah. I mean, I didn't consider it an RPG back then. I didn't even know that that term RPG until recently. Yeah, we considered it a desperate plea for psychological help. <laughs> 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 do do, do the, the viewers of um, Big Questions, have you told that story here? Yeah, maybe you can just recap it a little bit. Well, my neighbor Garth and I... Uh, made a, a game where, and, and us neighborhood kids all played it, where we would um, pretend to be, I guess, record producers or m music moguls and try to get songs up the Billboard Top 100 or Hot 100 chart. And there, we developed the rules to it. And we played it for like a week in the summer, like all the neighborhood kids, and then we gave up on it. Was payola involved? <laughs> yes. We had Monopoly money, we had dice, and we had, we had like what would happen if you land, we had a board and in the middle of it was the chart and we wrote the songs, titles on things. And so we got, we got to be the producers and stuff, but we also got to create the characters of the um, music pop stars or whatever. <laughs> and that's where this band name comes from? And that's where Jack Talcum got its his name, my, and Jack Talcum Jr., that is, and the songs that inspired the Dead Milkman after that. Dan, do you want to jump in with a question? Um, I was going to ask, like, for somebody who maybe doesn't have any experience playing D&D, &D, 
like how hard would it be for them to to jump into the dead milkman one? Yeah. Asking for a friend. <laughs> Can I take Justin, it? what do you think? So um, I always send people the, this uh, PDF. It's like a twenty page PDF called the Black Hack, and you you can be up and running with a, a system uh, within an hour. It's it's just so simple, um, and you you could use the Black Hack with um, Lost Tomb easily. Cool. So I can email you. Like people have never played D and D before. You mean weaklings? Weaklings, disgusting weaklings. <laughs> So, Andrew, I know in, in happier pre-COVID times, you have a weekly D&D get-together. Is that correct? That's right. Um, I've got a group of friends where we, um, we we got together for rather sad reasons that I, you know, we'll get into maybe another time. But uh, we've been going strong for over six years now. Um, during COVID, we... Um, uh, we now meet online, which obviously isn't the same. You know, you roll electronic dice, and uh, but it's a, it's still a nice social outlet. It's still, still good to see my my friends, even if it's it's on Zoom. And how about you, Justin? Did you have a regular uh, group or? Uh, not really. When I was playtesting my own stuff, uh, we had a group of writers and artists that would come together every six weeks or so. Um, but yeah, since COVID, it's been Mm -hmm. extraordinarily difficult and I really miss it I really do um and zoom just isn't the same like I um I was sort of back up a little bit like I, I got into tabletop gaming when my son was born and I was I was playing a ton of video games before that and I sort of intentionally like stopped the screen time thinking about him and wanting to get into more like analog in-person tabletop gaming stuff so like my whole reason for getting into the, into D and D and tabletop gaming was to abandon the screen. Um, so now it's just like with COVID, it's like oh man, I got to get back on the screen again, and then I have a day job where I'm on multiple screens all day long. So it's just it's too much. So I really miss the mm -hmm. the analog. Kind of so you so you sounds like you came to D and D and tabletop gaming later. Like you didn't do, play that as a kid. No, I had a cousin who gave me all the books and like uh, the, the lead figures and stuff, but I didn't have anyone to play with. So like I read the books and I was into fantasy art for forever. Um, but I just, I didn't have anyone to play with. I think a lot of people have that experience where, you know, you just sort of take the book by yourself and you read it cover to cover and you don't have a group to really dive in. Um, but in the past, I think, I played my first game maybe five years ago um, and, and fell in love with it right away, like completely head over heels. Um, being a storyteller, coming like with, like Andrew, coming from a fiction background, just realizing like, holy crap, like you can, you can tell an interactive story with a group of people and, and they're changing it with you. It's just sort of mind blowing. I've noticed a lot of people don't get back into game or into gaming until they have children because children are small and you can use them as game pieces. <laughs> <laughs> they're tough to paint, though. Yeah, they are tough to paint. Well, I'm facing some charges. I got to. <laughs> uh, I, I want to. I got to leap to this. Um, has anybody seen the cover of the latest issue of The Dragon? And does anybody want to address that? <laughs> Tell us um, what the Dragon is. Dr Dragon Magazine is uh, <coughs> has been around since the late 70s. It is a uh, monthly publication that was put out by TSR, the original company uh, who made Dungeons & Dragons, founded by, was it Gygax and Arneson? Um, a couple of years ago, I had a research fellowship at the Strong National Museum of Play, where I got to go into the archives of the greatest collection of gaming ephemera uh, probably in the world. Um, and I, I spent a week researching the early history of Dungeons and Dragons. One of the things that they brought to me in the archives was a cart, one of those library carts, stacked with every issue of Dragon Magazine. Um, I had a subscription, you know, at my, my house uh, where I grew up in Nether Providence, right next to Media. Um, this is a magazine I've been reading my entire life. And on the current issue, it mentions the Dead Milkman. Mm -hmm. Um, that mentions this this thing that the the this group of us have made together, and to to see this is um, 
it's beyond words. Rodney, you, you have a couple issues around, I think. I have more than a couple. And what I did, I grabbed, when you first told me about it, I grabbed an issue of Dungeon because I actually have Dragon downstairs. A lot of stuff I have that I consider sort of valuable, I have boxed up or sealed up in, in my basement. Mm -hmm. And it, it just still hasn't sank in because I've, I've been reading that magazine since I was a teenager. It was like the cool thing. And you would take, you know, you would take ideas and modules out there and you play them with your friends. So you'd send me an email about that and I, I just couldn't process it. I think around the time you were doing the interview with them, I think I, of course, had, had committed to something else. So I kept missing out on all this great stuff. Like I just, you know, and I thought, well, I would have just, I would have just been a babbling idiot more than I normally am. Uh, <laughs> it's I not possible, Rodney. Don't worry. You know, like, you know, oh, you know, yeah, sure. There's a guy in my school that, you know, he scored the big, just touched down the big game. And, you know, his dad told my dad about it. And then my dad said, oh, yeah, my son killed an Etten. He rolled a natural <laughs> funny. <It's laughs> <amazing. laughs> um, but, yeah, I, I would have just, I, I, I wouldn't have been able to verbalize. And I, I'm, I got you, I read that and you did a fantastic job. Uh, and, and, I mean, it's, it's just really, for those of us that grew up on this stuff, and if you're watching this and you grew up on the stuff, you know, the, the dragon is just, you know, having or getting mentioned in there, just mind blowing. So, yeah, that brings me to, I mean, uh, Justin, you ran a, a, and Andrew, you, you ran a successful uh, Kickstarter program uh, campaign for this. And uh, it's, you know, it's gotten a lot of uh, good press and uh, a lot of praise from a lot of people in the gaming world. It's, it seems like, I mean, I'm not, you know, super tuned into that, but it, from from what I've seen, it's gotten a lot of good press. Yeah. Um, it's not out in the world yet. We're still writing. It's 98% it's written, 97% written. There's um, some, one of the incentives with Kickstarter was um, people could be part of the book. So Andrew is writing stats for their monster and I'm, I'm drawing them. So that's, it's a slow process because we're talking to these people and trying to make it as meaningful as possible for them. Um, but yeah, I, I, I have full faith that once we launch it, people are going to be pretty excited. It's, it's unlike anything anyone's ever seen before. That, I mean, that's, that's the truth. And I make it my personal mission always to, to just create stuff that I don't want to say the world needs, but the world, what, what, what the world deserves and wants. So like make, make something f freaking weird, make it, make it strange, make a splash. Um, and that's, that's what this is going to be. I mean, it's, that's exactly what this is going to be. It it's was, it was funded in like 12 minutes or something, which yeah. is amazing. And it, it was very successful. Yeah. Um, so let's, uh, let's talk about, and maybe you can explain it in a better way than I can. The, uh, after the uh, campaign ended, now we're in the phase where people can go to something called the backer kit. What's that all about? It's, it's a little confusing. So um, people who missed the Kickstarter can still go to backer kit and pre-order it in, in like the pre-order shop. So if you're watching this right now and you're like, crap, I need this book. Um, I think maybe in the comments section or something, we'll provide the link. Oh yeah, definitely. Cool. Yeah. People can go straight there. Um, that, Kickstarter backers already know the deal, so I'm not even going to describe what they have to do. So yeah, if you if you want the book and you missed out, just go to the backer kit pre-order shop. The dice are there, the shirts are there. We have a whole bunch of unique, exclusive loot that you can grab. Um, which which uh, circle back, Andrew? You said you're working with a, an artist in Sweden for maps. Yes, that's uh, the cartographer that that just mentioned earlier. His name is uh, Nicholas Wested. He does a, a website called Paths Peculiar, and he does, uh, by my to my eye, some of the best cartography or fantasy cartography that uh, you, you could possibly find. Um, super cool guy. He doesn't do commissions. He doesn't do professional work. He, he's more of a hobbyist. Um, and I, I reached out to him, and uh, he he loved the idea enough that he was willing to to work with us on this. So. Um, we have within the book um, several maps. The, the map, huge, beautiful map of the borough of the Albear, which is, remains in the game. Um, some exterior shots. There's a, a compass rose, like on old uh, medieval maps. 
Um, there's one element that um, even the backers on Kickstarter don't know about yet. Uh, Joe's acting surprise, which is very sweet, but we sent you guys the email earlier today. Um, Justin, why don't you explain what the, the big reveal that we have for, for tonight? Oh man, uh, thanks for letting me do that. Um, so a few weeks ago or a month ago, we asked Nicholas if he could create a map out of the Dead Milkman logo. And um, knowing how difficult that is, because I mean, imagine the Dead Milkman logo, it's, um, you know, it's a cow head and it's <laughs> fine lines. There's some fine detail in there. Um, but he's literally, if you zoom out really far, bird's eye view, he is creating a detailed, beautiful, interactive D and D map of that logo, and it's it's awesome. It's we actually it. have we actually have a, a shot of the work in progress, which will okay. which will we'll post right here. <laughs> yeah. It's so freaking cool. When it's I so saw cool. that, the first thing I thought was more and more people are starting to play with, with battle mats where they'll draw out because, you know, you have the erasable marker and they'll draw it out and they'll cover those with little bits of card so as the, you know, the, the um, figures go through, you slowly reveal what's up. And when that is totally unrevealed and, and everybody's looking down on it and they see that minds are going to be blown. So I was just like, yeah, so I want to build a lot of the terrain that's that's uh, um, shown in the, uh, you know, in, in the module. I really... Like that's my next thing, goal in life. Yes. Do it. <laughs> no, um, where, where I'm sitting right now, I'm, I'm in an attic in uh, Manayunk. Um, Dean's been here a, a few times. Um, and I, I know you guys rehearse right down the hill. So after, once we're back to rehearsing, um, what, once, uh, once you guys come out of rehearsal one night, come over to the, to the, the house and we'll, we'll throw down a, a game and I'll make sure Justin gets on 95 once everything's safe again. Justin's okay. in Baltimore, by the way. Yeah. Okay. Oh, my overdrive through RPG. Uh, these are, which if you're a gamer, you know about drive through RPG. These are uh, pay what you want, I believe, correct? Yep. And these are the, these are the dead milkman character sheets. I've already filled one out, um, as have the other members of the band. So guys, uh, let's, let's see your character sheets. Nice. It was in oh. the memo, guys. Come the on. dog ate it. <laughs> <laughs> And for the, the pay what we want, the uh, that money all went to charity. And yes, Rodney, I think that was your idea. Will you will you tell us about that? LGBT center for youth. Yep. Uh, for people, yeah, people who were jerks to their kids. Their kids now have a better place to stay than they do. So uh, once again, screw you, mom and dad. So um, yeah, so that that makes me happy that that went to that charity. It's a really good charity. So and I, yeah, so go over there though. Grab your uh, grab your character sheet because you know you sooner or later you're going to be playing this game. That'll be linked down there. Recommendations time. Man, you know, I have such little time at the end of the day. So it might sound cliche, but the Queen's Gambit has been a really nice, smart, fun reprieve. I don't know if you, any of you guys have seen that on Netflix. I haven't watched it yet. It's cool. Um, I love period pieces. Like, I'm a huge Mad Men fan. Um, so it's got that kind of vibe, and the main character is just like a very cerebral, nerdy, um, like brilliant chess player. So got the tabletop vibe in there too. So I would I would absolutely recommend that. But I kind of feel cliche for saying that because it's like it's pop, you know. That's no, valid. It's, it's valid. Pop Andrew, how about you? Um, this might be going on uh, something that Dan said last week. Uh, I recommend asking for help. Uh, this has been a, a very difficult year for everybody. Um, the holidays for a lot of people are especially difficult. Um, if you need help, uh, please ask for it. Reach out. Um, perhaps we can link uh, hotlines or things here on this video. Reach out to me. Reach out to these guys. Reach out to a friend, a neighbor. If you find yourself uh, struggling, having any trouble, anything going wrong, please ask for help. That's a, a sign of, of true strength. Thank you. Uh, my recommendation will not be as nearly important as that. <laughs> um, uh, 
keeping with my fascination and preoccupation with food, the last couple of episodes, um, I would like to recommend a weekly email newsletter that you can get from the New York Times cooking uh, channel, division, I don't know what they call it. It's called um, Five Weeknight Dishes, and it just comes into your inbox. It has some really simple um, dinner ideas that you can make fairly easily. Um, and uh, it, you know, just comes once a week. It's not incessantly in your inbox. And uh, we've made a few dishes over the past couple of months with this, and I highly recommend it. So that's my recommendation. And I have a I have a D and D related um, recommendation. If, if like me, you enjoy building your own terrain and your own fun things for D and D and for war gaming and all that stuff, I'm going to recommend a channel and a website. It's Black Magic Craft. It'll be in the description of both the uh, the website and the YouTube channel. Uh, these are builds hosted by a guy named Jeremy. He's fantastic. And one of the best things is if he screws up, he shows you the screw up and he shows you to tear him apart. And he's just really, really great. But the weird thing is, is I've been watching this channel for months and months and months and didn't know. This is also Jeremy from Distorted Memory. And Distorted Memory are one of my favorite bands. Great band to listen to while you're, while you're playing games. Just fantastic. So I'm recommending both Black Magic Craft and also Distorted Memory. Thank you. I would like to recommend being kind. Being kind to others has a way of making you feel really good. That's good. I like that. Um, <clears throat> I would like to recommend uh, turning off notifications on your phone when you're in a Zoom call. Um, <laughs> and in addition to that, uh, I recently picked up crocheting. I, I had knitted for a while and I was never really that good. I did a bunch of hats. I compulsively knitted hats for a while. They're all over the place. Nobody wears them. Uh, and uh, crocheting is one needle. It's kind of cool. And you can do a different thing. You can make, I don't know, it just seems easier. But so either pick up crocheting or knitting, you. <laughs> it's uh, what, see a hat? meditative, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Let me see one. Uh, actually, one is right here. This was a, this was for my child, and it was too small for his head. <laughs> so I wear it because <clears throat> it it doesn't have a you know the quite quite the same feel as the Mike Nesmith thing, but it g doesn't fit on my head at all. Almost a yarmulke. Like, <laughs> yeah. Do I have any others here? No, I don't have any others here. But uh, that's it. May, may I say, as a as a longtime Dead and Oakman fan, um, from from uh, when Big Lizard came out, I, I think you guys sound better nowadays than than ever. Um, the the module, uh, I, I say this with love and respect, that the module is dedicated to to blood. Um, it, he's he's on the the first page when you open it up. Um, uh, but uh, with with Dan on on bass, I, I think you guys sound uh, e even better than than ever before, and I, I can't wait. Uh, to get to hear you live again. Well, I think I think you guys did an amazing job with the module. I'm not just you know saying that because it's out. You know, I'm, no, I'm I as somebody that's been doing this for over 40 years. at ah, scary. Um, I I was just blown away at the quality of it. I mean, I I was absolutely amazed, and I'm absolutely proud. We wouldn't be sitting here talking about it if we were ashamed of it. No, very very proud. And I mean, it's got it's got the feel of. You know, when you would go and you would get a module, it's got it's great to have that feeling back again. You're like, ooh, ooh, look, 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 you know, and that that thank you so much for for bringing that feeling back. I really appreciate that. Uh, you, yeah, you, thanks for being here. You made my 2020 right there. <laughs> Hope everybody has a safe holiday. We will uh, be taking a break actually for what two weeks. Yep. So yeah, we'll join you in the new year. Barbara Walters fight sailors. <laughs> <laughs> All right, bye everybody. Uh, Thank you so much. It's been an honor.